<clears throat> well, Betty, uh, what a thrill this is for me. You know, we did this in London, in London. after <laughs> Promises, Promises, yeah. and now we're doing it here after Cats and on the eve of the Tonys, and you have a Tony nomination for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. Mm -hmm. Have I got it right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, tomorrow is the big night. I'll mm. be on an airplane going back to Dallas, but I have my VCR going, so if I miss any of it, I'll have it on tape. I mm. want to keep it on tape anyway. I wish you could be there. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. Mm. But let me ask you this, Betty. What does this Tony nomination mean to you? Well, I've had time to think a lot about it. I, I feel it's... Um, um, it feels like a validation, a, a final... Can we stop? I'm sorry. Yeah. you got to take her out. She's driving me crazy. <laughs> Let, let Phil hold her, and then Betty, you come back in if you like. Um, okay, let, let, I'll yeah, just start the whole thing again. All right. Okay. Betty, what does the Tony nomination mean to you? I think it's a, a validation from my colleagues that says, um, you've been doing this for quite some time, and we're... Um, we're in support of your work. We congratulate you on a, a job well done, and um, it's it's like it's like a pat on the back. It's like a, an endorsement, um, a diploma. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just feels like it feels like a really nice thing from the people that um, I've been working with for quite some time. You know, there's a community, a theatrical community, and it feels like they they would be saying if I were to win, we're proud of you. You've done good. You know. That's what it means. <laughs> if you do win, please God. Yes. <laughs> if you do win, how will you feel? Oh, gosh, this week I, I've I've experienced you know what I think it would feel like, and I I just think it would feel great. You know, I really hope it happens. I just think it would feel great. And of course, there is the chance if somebody well, else wins. I went through that this week. I was nominated as um, uh, best actress in a musical for the uh, Drama Desk Award. And Makarova beat me, and uh, they told me this on Wednesday. So when I went to the matinee on Wednesday, I, I was like, "Oh my goodness," you know, because I I didn't really have an expectation on it, but I started feeling what that felt like. And then for the, you know, I started like thinking, "Oh my goodness," you know, what what would this be if I lost? It would maybe feel something like this. Only I'll be in a theater, and I'll be with my family and friends, and they'll announce this, and I'll be sitting there. You know, how will that feel? And I think it will be disappointing uh, if, if I were uh, to not win, but uh, that's all right. You know, it's like it's you know it's all right. I've like ex <laughs> I've experienced it through. You know, to um, feel it. But I I think see I, I kind of view life. I have like an intellectual view on life, and that's one thing. But it's like you have to go through certain emotions. And when you want, when you're trying to do good, it's like running a race. You want to cross the wire, you know, and you hope that you'll um, be first. <laughs> I don't know, you know. This is so bizarre because I don't really believe in competition, <laughs> so I find this very strange that I'm having all these responses. And my experience this week has been, how can you be feeling all these things and yet I am, you know? And so I've been talking to my my therapist about it and and uh, friends and concentrating on it, meditating on it. And I think it's just stuff you have to go through in life. I mean, I'll be fine. Do you know what I mean? I'll be fine either way. It's, it's just an endorsement on the one hand, and it you know, doesn't really mean to. I had dinner with my friend Jane Greenwood, and I've been telling everybody she won the Tony last year for her costumes in Medea. And she told me at dinner last week, she said, Betty, I've never won the Tony. And I said, I'm sure you won the Tony. I've told everyone that you're a Tony award-winning designer. And she says, no, I've been nominated five times. She says, I've been a bridesmaid five times. And she said this as we were walking by uh, Bergdorf Goodman, and there were all these brides in the window. She goes, but these are brides, Betty, so I think this is a symbol. You're going to win. You know, I said, oh, no, <laughs> please don't tell me that. You know, Part of the problem is that a lot of people have said, told me this for a long time, you know, um, you're going to win a Tony, you're going to win a Tony, you're going to win a Tony, which is great, you know, I really appreciate that as a compliment, but it's, your mind is like, you know, so it's like, if you're not going to win, then it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, so I don't know, it feels weird, very weird. Well, we'll, we'll know, and I'll talk to you on Monday. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Tender Mercies, Betty, because uh, I knew that, you know, that you were in this and I knew what you were playing and so forth. 
but I wasn't prepared for the kind of performance. Let's talk about one scene in particular, the bedroom scene. Mm -hmm. Now, the emotion in that scene, I, I, I don't know anything I've ever seen on the screen that is any more emotional <laughs> and so beautifully played. I Thank mean you. that, Betty. Thank you. Not because you're my dear friend. It's but because truly. I'm your dear friend. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it is not. No, my dear. I, I can tell you what was going on inside me. I've never mm -hmm. been any more moved by anything. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, what were you drawing on, Betty? Were you thinking of some sadness in your own life? What were you drawing on? Well, um, the way I work for a film is um, I do a lot of preparation. Uh, I went to Texas for a week and we rehearsed. Prior to that, I'd you know, been working with the script and stuff. When I went, then I had a two-week break before we started shooting and I worked with my coach who happens to be my ex-husband, Peter Flood. He's a fabulous coach. He coached uh, Jill Claybrook for all her really fine film roles. And uh, she, in fact, will book his time six weeks prior, you know, to shooting. She'll work with him several times a week, several hours a, a day. She's never really talked about him, which is, I, I think, I think she should because he's a wonderful coach. Anyway, I worked with him every day for uh, two weeks or so and several hour sessions. And we went over and over this stuff, and mainly what I, I, I talked to him about my fears, you know, but I, I, or, and what I know, knew about this kind of woman and her psychology and everything. And I just laid it out and said, you know, well, I know she's this, and what I'd like to communicate here is this, and what I feel really needs to be, uh, you know, in, it, it, it's, it's complex, you know, because you know, my, my feelings about life and society and men and women, you know, go very deep. And so any part I play, I want that to be communicated. So um, I talked about all those things, and then, and then he, he is very good in that. He brings his, well, what is your fear? You know, well, my fear is that you know if I have to play these high-pitched emotional things, and that's very hard to play on film and still have it be palatable, acceptable. You know, because people, I think, people have a hard time handling sizable pain. I mean, none of us want to go through you know a huge grief. None of us want to really, you know, that's I don't want to. <laughs> Nobody does, you know. So um, he. Um, encouraged me to go ahead and experience through the things that I was most afraid of and then he as he knows me because we've known each other for 14 years now he um, would talk to me about things in me that he knew and it may, generally gave me a feeling of security in handling the uh, emotional th things that I had to do and he encouraged me to go ahead and, and act certain things out and then he would assure me that it was, you know, I wasn't going to look terribly ugly or, you know, that it wasn't, it was too horrible to watch, you know, or anything. So I worked through that. Then he took notes of all of our sessions, we recorded all the sessions, and then he came back and gave me a, a body of notes reminding me of certain things to think about that had come up in our sessions that were really dear to me. And um, then my brother steps in at this point, my brother Norman, who uh, was one of the assistant editors on Tender Mercies. Norman has this really fabulous taste in music, and it happens to be in many ways corresponding to my own taste in music. He know Norman knows what kind of music will touch my heart. So inevitably, everything I've ever worked on, at a certain point in my work process, Norman will appear. It just always happens this way, I don't know. And he'll say, listen to this piece of music, you know. And so he walked in at that point, you know, when I was in Texas, and he said, right, this is a beautiful piece of music, listen to this. And I listened to it, and it, it really, music always just goes right through, you know, and kind of just touches me, if it's really what I love, you know, touches me really deeply. And it just so happens that the piece, or happened that the pieces of music that he brought to me, one was a piano solo by Dave Grusin, that was that is really exquisite, and the other was this really uh, beautiful piece of music by Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays. Lyle Mays uh, went to North Texas and is a great jazz piano player, and both pieces were very profound and um, really um, touched that part of my feeling about life, which is eternal, you know, which is kind of sad but so beautiful, and 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 so whenever I would play those pieces of music, I would just drop down into this place inside myself and I would feel that real softness, that real sensitivity, you know, and and the, oh, the one piece was really great because it had the laughter of children in it 
and I thought, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect, you know, because the scene was about her loss of her child, and um, so, and it was supposed to be, as it was written, was very dramatic and very hard-edged in that she attacks out of her pain, which is a lot of that was cut um, in the film because the monologue was originally a couple of times as long as that, and uh, so. I play the music. But I'd done my homework, so by the time I got to Texas to shoot, I reread my notes and you know studied thing. I knew what I want to, you know, I knew what I wanted to communicate. I had a sense of the of the things that ne the the qualities that needed to be there. And then the day of the shoot, um, which was the second day of my shooting, which was very amazing because I wasn't really um, comfortable yet. I didn't really know my crew yet, or you know the people I was working with. They didn't know me. And I had to do this really revealing emotional work, and that's, you know, it's not easy to do. And so um, I, I stayed. In, I got ready, and they put the wig on me and everything. And, and I sat in um, my trailer with my little Walkman, listening to this piece, beautiful piece of very, you know, beautiful, beautiful music with the laughter of children in it. But this like really sad, really pretty thing. And I just meditated and stayed very quiet with myself, listening to that over and 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 over again, because you have to wait a long time in film. And then um, I went onto the set and uh, uh, just stayed very calm and just concentrated, you know, on the that feeling, her being in that situation. And they, you know, he said, "Are you ready?" And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "You know, well, um, can we shoot the rehearsal?" And I said, "Sure." And so I, we started, and I just turn around and I look at Robert Duvall's eyes, and his eyes are so wonderful, you know. His concentration is so deep, and so he's he's like the perfect catcher for you know a pitcher. I always think of myself as an athlete, right? And so I'm the pitcher, and he's the catcher behind the camera. I'm in that situation, and then if he were on camera, I'd be the catcher, you know. But his eyes, I just felt like I was like caught, and I was completely safe, you know, because he he has that kind of concentration. So I just turned and I started, and I just trusted him, and this stuff just started coming up, you know, because I'd done it all the homework and it was all just like waiting to express itself, and I watched his eyes and he just his eyes, you know, indicated like that, you know, and I just let him kind of guide me through it like music, you know. He was the conductor. Yeah, and that's the way it worked. We we Which did take three did takes. they use? They cut together, I think, the best of the three takes. Um, you know, which was, I'm very pleased with the way they cut it. I think um, William Anderson is a great editor because he picked, um, no, it seems to see as an actor, you, you know, you have your preference for the delicacy of certain moments because you know what you're trying to communicate. But you never know if other people will have the same appreciation for the quality of your communication. And he did. He, he cut that scene so beautifully. Um, little moments that maybe another editor with less sensitivity would have not valued so much, but every moment that I really cherished when I was watching the um, dailies is there, so I'm like really happy with that. Betty, one last question, and that is a line, and so many people have repeated this line to me saying that it was the most chilling line for them. When your character says, why did God do this to me? Mm -hmm. Now that was in the script, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, did you play around with that line a lot, or did you just instinctively know what to do with that line? Uh, that was a very hard line for me. I, I'm interested that you picked that one out because I found, found that very difficult to say because I don't think God does things to us. As I, I don't believe that. And um, so it was hard for me to say that, for Betty to say that line as Dixie. Um, and I, quite frankly, think that there's a little flatness to it uh, in terms of the way I said that, because there's no conviction. I, I, I'm not convinced that God does anything to us but love us, you know. And um, we we misinterpret so much and we distort so much in our thinking. It was very hard for me to say why why has God done this to us? Why you know why has God done why has God done this to me? So for me in the monologue, that's flat. I don't, you know, which maybe is good because you know the the flatness, you know, is communicated. Is, uh, the, you know, it just has that tonality to it. Well, I it could never plays. say it with conviction. <laughs> it plays beautifully. Okay, now just uh, one. Uh, how much longer are you going to be in Cats? 
I don't know. Um, I I can probably I can give notice in the show now at any point to leave for other work, and a couple of things have been offered to me for the summer, but I haven't really made a decision yet. I just want to get through Sunday and see where everything stands. I I feel like I'm just chattering today because I I'm I'm very I guess nervous and excited and everything. I don't feel very calm. I hope this is all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's super, and we, and we can edit it. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, I think I think okay. I think then that we can just. Uh, let's let him pull back to a two shot and just to establish that and I'll continue talking. Mm -hmm. Well, Betty, you know my love and my prayers are with you. Thank you. And I only wish I could be here, but uh, you know how in this crazy business we can't yeah. always be where we want to be. Oh, I wish you could. But you know that when you go up on that stage, see I, I won't <laughs> allow any <laughs> negative vibes at this point. When you go up on that stage, you just know that Bobby and Phil are just so proud of you. We can't stand it. I will. I'll know that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, love. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes. And, uh, <coughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Very quickly, I'll do these.